Well, hey, everybody. Well, I think there's a moon up there <laughs> uh, amongst the uh, clutter. Yeah, that's it. All right, so as I watch them, okay, we are expecting, okay, let's like get ready for this, okay? Brace yourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, batten down the hatches. So, oh my goodness, look at this one. That looks like really cool. Awesome. Okay, let's watch that one spread. It's got little pom-poms already. All right, so uh, two days of 70 degrees. I'm sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, this is like for real. Can we get the flip-flops back on? Unreal. Oh no, it was like forecasted all week to be in the 70s. Okay, well, that did change in a hot minute. So, <laughs> yes, in just a few short hours, we're going to be, <laughs> yeah, wintry weather mix again. So, saying that, I know I have to get out there and uh, get to the grocery store and do a few errands before I hunker down for the next couple of days because it's going to be that cold again. But it was a nice day being able to open some windows and things like this and get some fresh air into the room, right? All right. Oh, my goodness gracious, y'all. Look at that one. I didn't see that one when I came out. Sorry. And the moon. I was looking at the moon. <laughs> So, yesterday morning, I strained, okay? Um, getting up early, as I have been lately, so you can tell it's time for a time change. And I come out to see, oh, how do you like my makeshift bird bath? The other one, like, shattered into a thousand pieces. So I took the old one, and it was all rusty underneath it, and it leaked out. But I went ahead and put a bowl in it and said, you know what, y'all? Uh, Y'all will be able to get water one way or another. We'll make it happen. <laughs> we'll just use what I got. So, we got a bird bath. <laughs> we do. They, they've been using it. So, as I was surprised as I opened the door, actually, I've been surprised when I opened the door the past couple of days with girls meeting me right at the door, like they know I'm, I'm here. She's up. <laughs> yes. And I'm looking at a bird that I haven't seen in a while. And I know that you all will know that a robin usually means the first sign of spring. Wow. All right, so I'm looking at a robin redbreast sitting right there, um, taking a drink from the bowl. <laughs> that was amazing. So puttering around yesterday, you know, and well, actually the past few days, and you're, you're looking at, you know, this stuff here. And you're thinking, okay, what do I need to do with this? Well, normally we kind of like do something that we call weeding, right? And then we go ahead and we we weed everything out. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I pray not. And, um... They... I'm sorry, I had to wait and see if the... Morning Dove was screaming, the king is coming, because he has been. So, all right, so I'm sitting here thinking, all right, I got to start somewhere here, right? And then, well, I had been prompted as, well, I have had actually a few comments and about this and then actually what I'm seeing and sensing with my spirit um, taking it to the Lord and seeing, you know, Lord, oh, aren't you so cute? You are. You sit right up there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got distracted again. Okay, so I'm saying that, you know, well, we know that it is about planning time, right? And as we went over on Saturday Night's Live, we were talking. Now, there was a whole bunch that I didn't get out, okay? As we were talking about Exodus and uh, crossing over and that story along the way. And I'm trying to go as fast as I can, but I got distracted and off track a few times, okay? So that would be understandable why we didn't get into, uh, I think we did touch on Parham, which I felt was the dress rehearsal for the upcoming Passover, crossover, whatever. Um, I do believe it is a spring rapture, and I am saying that, okay? So, when spring is, 
I don't know. I think it's sprung. Oh, look. The next month is a spot. When did that happen? My goodness. I turned away for a second. <laughs> okay, so, all right. So then we had been talking about, this is like really crazy. All this. The Lord is just amazing. I can't make any of this up, y'all. None of it. And he's just so good, and he's so good all the time. So we had read about the mustard seed, right? And we talked about how it's the smallest seed of all, yet it's probably the most the greatest seed of all as well as it was you know as we talked about the parable of the sower and he threw it out there and it grew up to be um to become a large tree in which the birds of the air would come and lodge in the branches and you can see that i've got some all kinds of critters up there lodging in the branches i've actually had a a mountain lion over there and then a bobcat was over there <laughs> and, and that would be verified by the lady next door as they were sitting there aghast and I know that I have a well we have I have squirrel bushes all the way up there <laughs> squirrel nest I don't know what you call them along with the ones out front and well they're everywhere you know that Debbie's bed and breakfast open 24 7 <laughs> so um I started continuing to read as in Parable of the Sower, as Jesus talks about a couple things here that I thought was pertinent to the occasion that we're in now. As many times as I said, my goodness, y'all, the field is tilled and ready to go. All we need to do is plant them seeds, right? As the Holy Spirit is the one that takes over <laughs> that's manna from heaven you want to? huh? I mean, you think he understands me? <laughs> no he's been eating out of my hands but we don't have time for this right now y'all alright so um, so after in verse 33 when it talks about um, you know where Jesus is talking about the mustard seed and the tree. And so he talks in parables, remember, okay? He spoke in parables because those understood him, would understand him. And the Pharisees never understood anything, right? Um, so we see the significance into there and why he spoke in parables. And I don't know, I, I guess I kind of find myself speaking in parables sometimes or, or listening in parables <laughs> when, when you're talking to people, right? So, yeah, uh, no longer that deer in the headlight look. It's like that, hey, it's time to wake up, y'all, okay? And I'm praying for you, and I'm believing on Jesus, all right? And the Holy Spirit is going to move on our behalf. He answers prayers. So then we see here... Um, that in Matthew 13, he talks about, starting in verse 37, he said, And he that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the, in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this war. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth, as the son in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hid in a field. The day when a man has found, he hideth, and for the joy, therefore, goeth, and selleth all that he has, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus keeps on talking in parables here the whole time, but they're understanding. 
is like a, a, a like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, meaning similar pearls and fine pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net, that which is cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Kind of reminds me of Peter and throwing the net out, right? And catching the 153. Oh, darling, you're just so cute. I can't help it. I have to throw you a nut. Okay. There you go. Um, so, then we see that, um, and when it was full, they drew it to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, and the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Well, there's a few times that Jesus repeats this. This is red letter that we're reading, and there's several times that he is repeating this. So, um, you know, just an ad blip here is, you know, they're, and they're so cute when they drink, right? <laughs> um, I'm thinking about, you know, well, I'm going to, you know, take care of the weeds here. And, and we know we, we must do that, like, you know, for planting and stuff, right? For the fact that we don't want the roots to get strangled, okay? But in a spiritual case here, it's likened onto something totally different. But yet, it's the Lord, and He's doing the work. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Because he that began a good work in us is faithful to complete it. And only he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all un of our unrighteousness. When we repent, we know as we have the Holy Spirit and we are convicted, nice and gently nudged. And we know that we have just, well, just might have missed the mark a little bit. Hey, we all fall short. And we're going to until we get those new glorified bodies. Can't wait. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, all right, you know, when I got into this and what I had brought me to was something on Matthew 13, but it was like a, a little saying about how <laughs> I just love the way he landed. I don't know why. That was like slow-mo or something. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm getting distracted everywhere today. All right. The yard was very, very busy today, all day. So they're letting me know that there is storms coming in, absolutely spreading across the sky and making it difficult to breathe. And you can taste it. So, you know, Jesus said when they came, they said, you know, um, well, my goodness, it was like, I'm going to paraphrase it, okay? <laughs> Please. <laughs> it's like an unto a man, like, you know, he's tending the field, and, and what happens? He falls asleep. And as he told Jesus, he said, well, I don't know what happened, but as I was sleeping, somebody came in and, you know, threw these bad seeds in there, all right? So it sounds like the enemy is what he said. He says the enemy is the one that threw bad seeds in there while he was sleeping so maybe there is no time to sleep y'all <laughs> kidding and <I'm> saying <laughs> go to sleep get your rest um <laughs> um but anyway so you know when jesus saw this and he likened it onto well the man that had plenty but yet he wanted to willingly lovingly wanting to just go ahead and clean up the field, right? And he was going to separate the wheat and the tares, and Jesus said, let them grow together until the end. Well, what happens? This is when the thrasher, right? If anybody knows anything about harvesting, um, things like this, right? They, they use a machine called the thrasher, and the thrasher comes in and absolutely just scoops it all up, but 
then it separates it as well. And the Word of God tells us that it takes us, or as a we, right, to heaven, to home, while the rest are bundled up and cast into the lake of fire. All right. Well, that doesn't sound very pleasant now, does it? But then there's also the chaff. And the chaff is like, well, you just kind of say, you know, when you're, if you're a baker or know anything about that, it's, it's so light that when you kind of like take a, a piece of wheat as an example here, and you just kind of like whip it in the air, it kind of like, these like little particles will will blow away, right? That's kind of like the chap. It's like the outside of a hole, right? The husk, that's it. I don't know, I might not be talking fluently. After all, <laughs> I'm off the meds, but it didn't really go away. And many have been sick amongst us and many are still sick amongst us. And my goodness, are you serious? 70 to 30 again? What? Can I please have my flip flops back? <laughs> or can we come home now, Lord Jesus? Yeah, that's what we want. Absolutely. So I just want you to know that, you know, um, Saturday night I didn't even get through as I was looking through my notes about the rest of the study that I was going to try to squeeze in. <laughs> Who knew that I was going to repeat things 20 times and and then there were a few distractions and things like this, so I gotta stay focused and on topic in order to get through the time. And then we need times when we're just sitting there fellowshipping, but there was like so much that the Lord had shared with me that I wanted to share with you, and I know it all didn't come out right. My goodness. <laughs> I was bouncing off the walls, remember? Yeah. Well, I've calmed down now since. So, saying that, I just wanted to say, hey, everybody, we don't have much time. The soil is ready, right? The field, time to plant. That's what Jesus does. And us, his apostles, right? His disciples, we plant. The Holy Spirit will water it. And then at the end, as the word tells us, then it'll be gathered up together and separated. The Lord's doing the separating now. As you can see clearly with your eyes, um, well, people are, are being exposed. I guess I don't think I like the word people. Can I correct that and say, um, that, you know, like people who say, I'm a Christian. <laughs> they were across, they're a Christian. But they don't know one scripture. And then there's others that say, well, I'm standing in a garage, so I must be a car, right? And I know I'm talking silly right now. But that's just kind of an example that, you know, get tight with Christ. It's a relationship. It's all about Jesus all about Jesus and he's got this while we wait and watch for Titus 2.13 our blessed hope our only hope to part those clouds and call us up hither in the moment in the twinkling of an eye Debbie from Texas is saying peace out Maranatha let's keep looking up the king Surely is coming. Angels, angels everywhere. <laughs>